Archaeology breakthrough. Huge discovery shows that the fall of Babylon, Mesopotamia, and the Middle East, the empire downfall was basically due to earth changes. Joel Day of Express UK reports the findings by Japanese geologists and archaeologists. These scientists stunned the world with what uh, their answer brings, the mysterious and sudden collapse of the powerful Mesopotamian Empire about 4,000 years ago. This, as we know, is about the time that the Egyptian pharaohic kingdoms collapsed as well because of what happened there. They say that it was at that point an asteroid impact that caused earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and uh, ash uh, clouds and also temperature changes causing aridity, droughts all along northern Africa and Egypt, of course. Now, this case here in Mesopotamia, which was a huge empire, the Babylonian, the Babylonian Empire, spanning much of the Middle East, including modern-day Iraq, Kuwait, eastern Syria, eastern Turkey, and all the bordering regions, basically all the Middle East. The kingdom was in the midst of fertile lands within the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Mesopotamia, that's what it means, it means in between two rivers, suddenly collapsed over a relatively short time and it eluded the scientists and researchers through the ages. Why did it collapse? Now the study's findings point towards a potential answer. Mesopotamia was caught up in a giant dust storm that the empire could not cope with. In other words, it was a drastic, extreme weather change, and it resulted in inability to grow crops, and therefore they had famine, and of course, massive uh, social upheaval, just as they had in Egypt. Dr. Tsuyoshi Watanabe of Hokkaido University was involved in this study, and he said, although the official mark of the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, meaning the Mesopotamian and Babylonian, is the invasion of Mesopotamia by other populations, our fossil samples are windows in time showing that variations in climate significantly contributed to the empire's decline. This study tells of how the researchers looked at six 4,100-year-old porites, coral fossils, that were taken from the Gulf of Oman that signaled, quote, a prolonged winter chamay season, chamal season, with frequent chamal days, end quote. Now, Dr. Watanabe and his team compared the ancient coral fossils to current coral samples along with meteorological information. And from this, they found that the ancient coral contained evidence of strong winds typically associated with severe dust storms. And their statement of the findings said, the data before and since the collapse are furthermore comparable to modern coral data showing the dry spells would have been sudden and intense. And this likely caused agricultural failures in Mesopotamia and contributed to the Akkadian Empire collapse as this region depends on water rainfall, winter rainfall. So on top of the storm, it also had thought they had thought that in-house fighting, of course, could be contributing to the empire's eventual collapse, who would be top dog, etc. It's not the first or the last time this happens in an empire, in a government. The Akkadian Empire ruled parts of ancient Mesopotamia from the 24th to the 22nd dynasty BC, century BC, though mysteriously abandoned their settlement over 4,000 years ago, Dr. Wantanambi said, further interdisciplinary research will help improve our understanding of connections between climate changes and human societies in the past. No kidding. Well, whenever you have an extreme change, you're also going to have a breakdown of society. People, if they don't have enough to eat or heating to heat, if they don't have their fundamental necessities, there's going to be social uprising. Um, he noted that the official mark in the collapse of the Akkadian Empire remained the invasion by other populations, but the sudden storms would have 
serious implications on the social fabric of the empire. Researchers wrote in their study the abrupt intensification of the surface winds would have caused aridification during winter in the Mesopotamian region. Here, the winter season is critical for agriculture even today. So research was published in the Journal Geology of this finding. The kingdom was, as we know, dominated by the Sumerians and the Akkadians, including Assyrians and Babylonians, from the beginning of written history until the fall of Babylon, 593 BC, then occupied by the Achaemenid Empire. So that part of that empire, that kingdom, came to an end at uh, 332 BC, when Alexander the Great made his way through the east, going through Babylon, and of course that was the end of the Persian Empire. After his death, after Alexander the Great's death, it became part of the Greek Seleucid Empire. His generals divided his uh, uh, territories into four parts. They even took uh, Egypt. That's when Egypt had the um, Greeks there. Ptolemy, for example, took that part, and uh, it was the Ptolemies that uh, had Egypt. Cleopatra, uh, the, the, late, late, the last queen of Egypt, was, uh, of course, part of his uh, dynasty. So the Mesopotamia area is significant to our understanding of uh, what made the site of the earliest development of Neolithic Revolution from around 10,000 BC, let's say from the last ice age. It was uh, identified as having inspired the greatest inventions of our history, including the creation of the wheel. I would venture to say that the creation of the wheel was way before that, but anyway. Uh, the planting of the first cereal crops, the most notably development of written script, mathematics, astronomy, and agriculture. And uh, it was said that here is the first written documentation of actual uh, historical events. The kingdom outdates modern mainstream religions, followed by polytheistic system of beliefs worshipping multiple gods derived from earth and natural elements. What's very strange is that this time period and what happened to them with the change in temperature with uh, the warming and the droughts and the sand uh, is exactly what happened to Egypt at that same time period. But uh, it was found that Egypt was impacted by an asteroid. And that was at the southwest corner of Egypt, bordering uh, Ethiopia. And at that point in time, what happened was there was, of course, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, ash clouds, and uh, a terrible amount of sand. I don't know if it was diatomic sand, but it basically covered, you know, that, that's when it basically covered everything there. And we have uh, images and reports of the Sphinx of Egypt being covered with sand up to its neck, famines, social unrest, and this is exactly what has happened in Mesopotamia around the same time period. So perhaps it was, uh, again, Mes Mesopotamia is the Middle East. So obviously it was the same area. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition 
and the community around our church. Thank you.